sudden this one person has complete control of you. You start doing things and going places and saying things that you can't tell anyone else about. Because this one person has gripped you and has control over you. Wherever you find yourself in your call this afternoon, never forget the influence and power of just one. So this one prophet in the midst of a war is led to change the perspective of a nation. I'm sure as Isaiah spoke, a whole bunch of folk thought he was crazy. What's he talking about? No more gloom. Doesn't he know that Judah has been captured? What's he talking about? No more gloom. Can he see our soldiers coming home in body bags every day? What's he talking about? No more gloom. Doesn't he see TP3 on the rise to come, come and conquer us? What's he talking about? No more gloom. Doesn't he know that we've lost battle after battle? What's he talking about? No more gloom. The people of Israel, no doubt, were used to a whole bunch of priests who just, who just stated the obvious and described the scenery. But didn't, didn't they know that God was calling prophets not just to describe the scenery, but to provide an alternative? I believe the difference between the preacher and the prophet is the preacher just sometimes describes the scenery. But the prophet is sent to provide an alternative. And I don't know why you're here, but I hope that God has called you to be, to be prophets. I hope that God has called you to do more than just describe the scenery. I hope that God has called you to do more than just tell people what they already know because the people don't really need that any longer. They they need some folks, some men and women who are going to provide an alternative for God. So this prophet Isaiah begins to paint the picture and begins to say there will be no more gloom. Begins to say that the shoes you use for war will now be burnt and used for fuel in the fire. He begins to describe an alternative for God. And the thing is, sometimes when you are speaking as a prophet, sometimes when you are speaking the word of God, you may be the only one saying what you're saying. You may be the only one doing what you're doing. But I heard a songwriter say, a charge to keep our hand and a God to glorify. Oh, to serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. You sometimes have to stand out all by yourself and declare the word of God just as one. It is not easy to be different. I know this. It is easier to be like everyone else. Isaiah, this prophet in the midst of war, declares a word that is beyond the reality of the present. So many of us reduce the call of God to simply explaining to people what they already know. But what is the word beyond the present? We need to spend less time reciting the facts and more time revealing the glory of God. We have become more concerned about popular opinion and less concerned about prophetic obligation. Isaiah, this preacher, this prophet suggests to us that if you are going, if you are going to speak the word of God, if you're going to serve God, you have to start saying some strange things. You have to start saying some strange things, beloved. No wonder why David said some strange things on the run from Saul. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. No wonder why Ezekiel said some strange things in that bad wilderness. Oh, I see your wheel in the middle of the wheel. Oh, can you say some strange things? That psalmist somewhere said, oh, when my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Oh, you need to start saying some strange things. When you are surrounded by your enemies, say when the wicked, even my enemies and foes, came to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Can you say some strange things for God? Oh, I will trust in the Lord until I die. Oh, no matter what happens to me, I'll continue to run on a little while longer. Say some strange things for God. Because our world is filled with people who are scared of being themselves. In our first for recognition and acceptance, we try to be like everyone else. We try to say the same thing as everyone else. Turn on TVN or the Word channel where I am and everyone sounds the same. There is no individuality. We have lost ourselves to everyone else. Yet our text reminds us this one point. We often focus so much in verse 6. We often put all of the glory on the declaration, but I believe that the power of the text lies also in verse 1. It lies in God's call of this one person. 
in the midst of all the things around him, in the midst of all the preacher friends who said, Isaiah, are you crazy? In the midst of all the folks who said, why are you saying this thing we can't see? Isaiah reminds us that God is still interested in using just one. God is still interested in using you just as you are, no matter where you find yourself and what you've been through. God is still interested in using you. No matter what you've done and where you've been, God still wants to use you, baby, just as you are. Because the truth of the matter is, just like Isaiah, God wants to use just one. He wants to use just one to talk about the one. He wants to use one to talk about the one who came through 40 and two generations. He wants to use one to talk about the one who said it. Oh, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. He wants to use one to talk about the one who said, who said that some say my name is the living of the ballot and the bright and morning sun. Some say the one's name is the Lord of Sharon and the fairest of 10,000, but I don't know about you. But I can say that the one's name is Jesus Christ. But Lord, I don't know why you're here. I don't know why you preach, but I hope you will be like Isaiah and be one for God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.